Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Haley Spies, and I am here with my colleagues, Caroline Shaw and Lucinda McEachin. We have been working with our research advisor, Dr. Benjamin Gehagen at Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. We have been studying the effects of climate change on the phenology of Cimmeria cassioides. Cimmeria cassioides, as is seen in figure eight, is a fall flowering root hemiparasite that is local to the Southeast United States coastal plains. Being a hemiparasite, Cimmeria photosynthesizes and siphons water and nutrients from a host xylem through specialized root structures known as Hostoria, as was shown in a 2005 study by Phoenix and Press. Phenology is the study of flowering and fruiting phases, known as phenophases, which are affected by environmental factors such as temperature and precipitation, which were monitored from 1895 to 2020. Studies have shown that climate change affects temperature and precipitation, therefore the phenophases as well. In a 2019 study by Pearson, fall flowering plants were shown to have delayed phenophases due to climate change. Based on previous research, Cimmeria cassioides is expected to display a later phenophase in response to climate change. Abelia specimens were accessed on the online database Southeast Regional Network of Expertise and Collection, otherwise known as CERNET. 500 abelia were accessed and given a value based on their phenophase, which can be seen in figure 7. The values were from 0 to 6c. Figure 1 shows a simplified diagram representing how each phenophase should look. Our version 363 is the statistical program that was used to convert the dates of collection to Julian days. R was also used to plot the data into figures and provide the initial statistical analysis. The National Centers for Environmental Information, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration monitored the temperature and precipitation for the Southern Plains and Gulf Coast for June through December, 1895 to 2020. The results show a 0.31 degrees Celsius increase in temperature and a 63.55 millimeter increase in precipitation. This can be seen in figures two and three. Figure four shows each phenophase trend in all states involved in the research. Each scatter plot in figure four either has a positive or negative slope. The positive slopes best support our hypothesis because they represent a delayed shift in phenophase. The negative slopes challenge our hypothesis because they show an earlier shift in phenophase. The p-values rendered the positive and negative trends insignificant. Displayed in figure five is phenophase one, also known as first flowering. This means that less than 50% of the plant's buds are opened. Figure six shows phenophases two, three, six, six A, six B, and six C, also called peak flowering. Peak flowering occurs when the plant is in its most prolific flowering stage. First and peak flowering both have p-values that are insignificant. The preliminary data showed that there were insignificant trends between Julian days and phenophases, which support the null hypothesis. The reasons for no shift could be due to the properties of a hemiparasite having a constant water supply from its host, despite the lack of water during the fall season, or the siphoning of additional phytohormones, such as abscisic acid and gibberellins, from the host xylem, as is shown in 2016 research by Lacombe and Accard. We hope to continue this research by completing the databasing of 500 herbaria on CERNET. With the remaining 500 herbaria, further statistical analysis with climate data can be run. We also hope to investigate the effects of climate change on Cimmeria pectinata and the host of Cimmeria cassioides. Before we conclude, we would like to thank the Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College School of Arts and Sciences, Science and Math Department for allowing us to access their computers and meeting spaces. We would also like to thank the STEM4 grant for providing financial support. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen, and goodbye.